I'm a cyber illusionist, which means I combine magic and technology to produce, well, something a little different. What you're about to see uses augmented reality, a layer of computer graphics superimposed over the real world. The visuals are not pre-recorded. They are live and reacting to me in real time. The magic happens up there on the screen, and the real world is here. You can choose which to watch, the, the magic, the reality, or a little of each. So let's begin. Today is a special day, a day we are all sharing, a day that will never be repeated, a day that we will all remember because of this. The calendar, 12 months, 365 days, sometimes a leap year. These days keep a record of our journey through time, past, present, and future. And we all think that one of these days is more special than the others. Our birthdays, this is mine, December 13. And it was on my sixth birthday that I saw my first magician. He produced a rabbit out of a hat. Abracadabra! <laughs> if you were of a mystical disposition, you could say that this one day, this particular birthday, did indeed influence my future career. Now you'll be glad to know that I no longer wear the hat. There have been many attempts to correlate the date of our birth to our personality. And the most popular of these is astrology. Astrologers believe that our personalities can be ascribed to one of the 12 sun signs, patterns produced by the stars. So I'm not only born on December 13th, I'm also born under the star sign of the archer, Sagittarius. Ouch! Sorry. I read horoscopes for fun, but I don't take them very seriously. But then again, we Sagittarians are renowned for our skepticism. The Swiss psychiatrist Carl Jung took a different view. He was the founder of analytical psychology and profoundly interested with our connection with archetypes and symbols. We are born at a given moment in a given place and like vintage years of wine, we have the qualities of the year and the season of which we are born. Astrology does not lay claim to anything more. Perhaps we shouldn't dismiss the astrologers too easily. Our own biological clocks depend on the movements of the planets. The sun, after all, rules our day. The light it emits affects the brain, which prevents the production of melatonin, the chemical that makes us feel sleepy. We have evolved a 24-hour body clock that matches the rotation of our planets from day to night as it orbits the sun. Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine, went further. He suggested that where and when you were born had an influence on your health and your life. My aunt said that summer babies have a healthier disposition, which is a little disappointing for those of us born in the autumn. Now, I was born in the winter, and a Swiss winter at that. Perhaps that's why it's my favorite time of the year. The calendar continues to guide our lives. It's the diary of our days, the sum of every hour we spend. You have it in your wall, your computer, your phone, of course your watch. Now, I have no idea whether the day of my birth played a part in my destiny. I leave that to the astrologers and the scientists to figure out. But I do subscribe to something that the theologian William Barclay said. He said that there are two great days in a person's life. The day you were born and the day you discover why. Now, I hope that 
each and every one of you who discover yours. One final thing. There are 250 people in this room. And according to mathematicians, there is a 100% certainty that two of them will share the same birthday. And a 49.63% probability that one of those people will have their birthday today. Now, if this is you and you know who you are, then I have only have one thing to say. Happy birthday. And happy birthday, Singapore. Thank you. So I prepared a few remarks, and then there's going to be another demo. The author Roald Dahl once said, those who don't believe in magic will never find it, and that the greatest secrets are always hidden in the most unlikely places. And I think every magician can relate to this. Magic is a craft built on secrets, and we look for them in the most improbable locations. It's about taking the every day and finding within it the possibility of illusion. We take the things you're most familiar with, a cup, a ball, a handkerchief, a rabbit, a human being, and we do something impossible with it. Because we are always looking for the magic, we develop a different way of looking at the world. We are obsessively curious. I cannot go into a hardware store without spending hours picking up those blister pack items off the racks and wondering what else I could do with them. And I'm not interested in hammering nails or cutting wood, and I have no idea what these items would do in the real world. But I can see endless possibilities for them in the magic world. It's something that magicians have in common with hackers. We can't help look beyond the ordinary function of an object to discover its hidden attributes. For magicians, the world is like the Matrix, where surface familiarity hides a far more interesting domain, where objects and ideas can be twisted, morphed, manipulated to do things they were never intent to do. This undermining of audience expectations is how magicians design tricks. It's how ladies are sewn in half, elephants made to disappear, and bullets caught between the teeth. The way in which reality can be sabotaged to produce an unexpected illusion are the secrets of magic. Now, many of the things that were considered magic hundreds of years ago are still considered magic today. That's why the the classics of magic are still being performed. The cut and restored rope, the Chinese linking rings. These age-old tricks defy the fundamental laws of nature, and those laws do not change. Now, it's possible that one day, science will be able to make self-healing ropes or metal rings that can pass through each other. Science will make real what once was considered magic, which is why magicians must always stay ahead of the reality curve. So to me, magic is about making possible today what science will make a reality tomorrow. We prototype the future. More than a century ago, stage magicians demonstrated things that were impossible at the time. Robots, wireless power, calculating machines, talking computers, and interactive screens. What once was magic is now a reality. Today we have technology and devices in our lives that would have been considered magical not too many years ago. The mobile phone, computers, the internet. The question really is, how does the magician add a layer of illusion to an object that has almost magical properties of its own? So with that in mind, I created these. You probably all heard of uh, Google's project Glass. Um, so thank you for Google, for not letting me in on the developer program. That's what you end up with. <laughs> um, so these glasses will enable me, or enable you, to see what's going on in the mind of a cyber illusionist when he does something as simple as uh, performing a, a card trick. So all we need is a, 
a playing card. And let's mark it so we can recognize it when we see it again. Woohoo! And let's lose it somewhere in the deck, just like this. And let's start up the system. System ready. Acquiring image. Now, for those of you who don't play cards, a deck of cards is made up of four different suits. There's hearts, clubs, diamonds, and spades. Cards are amongst the oldest of symbols and have been interpreted in many different ways. Each of the four suits stands for one of the four seasons. So there's spring, summer, fall, and... My favorite and season is winter. <laughs> yeah, mine too. Winter is like magic. It involves visual wonder, drastic change, and the delicate balance between its physical states. There are 13 cards in each of the suits. Each card represents a phase of the 13 lunar cycles. So over here we have low tide, and over here is high tide, and then in the middle, of course, is the moon. The moon is one of the most potent symbols of magic. There are two colors in a deck of cards. There's the color red, and the color black, representing the constant change from day to night. Marco, I did not know you could do that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> In a complete deck, of course, there are 52 cards representing the 52 weeks of the year. If you total all the spots on a deck of cards, the result is 365. 365? That's the number of days we have between each of our birthdays. Now let's make a wish. Don't tell, or it won't come true. As a matter of fact, it was on my sixth birthday that I received my very first deck of cards. And ever since that day, I traveled around the world entertaining boys and girls, men and women, husbands and wives, even kings and queens. And who are these? Ah, uh, mischief makers, watch. Wake up. Whoa! Are you ready? Ready! Let me see what you got. Presenting my pogo stick! Careful. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But today, I'm performing for a different kind of audience. Sign car detected. Now, sometimes people ask me to do this kind of work. Do you work from 9 till 5? Of course not. Magic is a 24-7 job. I don't literally mean 24 hours, 7 days a week. 24-7 would be a little bit of an exaggeration. But it does take practice. Now, other people will say, well, magic, that's the work of some evil supernatural force. Well, to this I just say, no, no. Or in German it's nine, nine. Magic isn't really that intense. I have to warn you though, if you ever play with somebody who deals cards like this, don't play for money. Why not? That's a very good hand. The odds of getting it are 4,165 to 1. Yeah, but uh, I think my hand is better. I guess we beat the odds. I think you got your birthday wish. And that leaves me with the last and most important card of all. And unlike anything you've just seen, virtual or not, this Sign card is without a question the real thing. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Thank you.